All right, you guys ready to get this party started? Let's do it. Go like this. So today, I'm gonna be explaining the improper integrals. It's really easy. We're gonna go through the main idea. It'll take us about three or four minutes. And then we'll do a bunch of examples. All right, so let's get on with it. The main idea goes like this. This is the shortest main idea in the entire history of main ideas. Because it's only four words long. This is the main idea. Some areas are long, well, maybe six words long. Some areas are long, very, very long. That's it, that's the end of the main idea. Let's get on with the example. As an example, we've got here the integral from one to infinity of one over x squared. Sometimes they say that picture's worth a thousand words, so let's go on and draw a picture that's worth a thousand words. Here's the picture, y is equal to one over x squared. And here's the area that uh, is represented by the integral. It starts off at one. I'm looking at here my lower limit. And you've got the area here. And it goes, of course, all the way to infinity. And you might think, well, that is crazy. You're doing an infinitely long area. I told you some areas are long, very long. Of course, you're going to get infinity. But don't be so quick to judge. This is what makes it interesting. It turns out that some really, really long areas that are very, very long are actually finite. They're not what you might expect that are infinitely long, uh, infinity. Check this out. But let's actually do the work. So that you do the work here. Um, uh, and sometimes you, you know you might think, well, infinity is too far, man. I can't go all the way to infinity. Maybe I can just take a little intermediate step here, a, and then maybe I'll just I'll go from one to a, and then I'll take the limit as a goes towards infinity. Often that might help. Often it's not even necessary. And I'll tell you when, often you can just do it all at once. And I'll tell you when you can do one or the other in just a second. Here, uh, you would take the limit as one, one goes, as x goes from one to infinity, x to the negative two, dx, the integral would be x negative one over negative one, going from infinity to one. That would, of course, can be rewritten using your excellent algebra skills as negative 1 over x going from infinity to 1, which of course would give you 1 over negative infinity, minus negative 1 over 1, which of course would give you 0 plus 1, which of course would give you 1. yippee ki -yay. Done. See that? I told you. Um, now, let me explain something. Sometimes this com computation here, when you're evaluating the endpoints, is not so simple. Sometimes it's a lot more interesting than this. When that happens, Remember this, you can always use this idea to try to manage the complexity here. If you get some init, one of the seven famous indeterminate forms, use this idea. Don't go all the way to infinity. Instead of going all the way to infinity, uh, you could alternatively try this. Forget about infinity, just go to A and then do the limit as A goes towards infinity. That would help you manage the complexity here of the indeterminate form. Just something to keep in mind. All right, let's go on and do another simple example, and then we'll take it up a notch or two and do some more interesting ones, yeah? Next, a simple example. Another way to rephrase the main idea would be to just say some areas are tall, really tall. Take this one, for example. If I was to make a picture of it, the picture would go something like this. It would go like this. I've got the absolute value of x. As x gets really, really close around zero, they become really, really, the quotient becomes really tall. So it would look something like this. Same thing on the other side because it's symmetric. The absolute value would make it look the same on one side or the other. And we're attempting to find the area from negative 1 all the way to 0 on this side. And also from positive 1 all the way to uh, 0. 0 on that side. And here's the exactly the main idea illustrated again some areas are very 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 tall you might be concerned that that this is getting really 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 tall and so maybe the area that fits in this little wedge here is infinite and the same thing on the other side maybe maybe not the thing that makes this interesting is that sometimes tall areas are finite even if they're infinitely tall because they get thin so much they get so thin as they grow up as they grow taller that uh, the area becomes negligible at some point 
Um, and, and so sometimes uh, this turns out to be a finite area. Well, there's nothing to it. You just do the work and you find out. Uh, here, again, uh, because we can use the symmetry of the graph, maybe it's just easier if we compute this integral. We'll find this area. And whatever it is, we're going to assume that the left one is doing exactly, exactly the same thing because they're symmetric. And so our attempt will begin with going from from 0, 0 from the right, to 1 of x to the uh, negative 1 half dx. Notice here I dropped the absolute values. I can do that because x's are positive here. So in this range, uh, the absolute value of x is the same thing as x. They're indistinguishable, so I can exchange one for the other. Okay. And just in case you're keeping track, over here, the absolute value of x could be exchanged for a negative x because they're all negative. So if I slap another negative, it would make them positive. Uh, so on this range, you could exchange them for that. Well, that's just in case you're keeping track. All right, so so let's let's get on with it. You would add 1 to the exponent. That would give you 1 half. You would divide by the new one. You evaluate from 1 to 0. So that would give you 2 times the square root of 1 minus 2 times the square root of 0 from the positive side. Again, if I draw something really, really complicated, I would have had to use my limit notation. I would have had to say, wait a minute, i got to stop here at a and then take the limit of whatever my answer is as a goes to zero from the right. But this one's really harmless. I can just evaluate it. Now this becomes two times one minus two times zero, which is a grand total of two. Look what happened here. Sometimes, um, Tall areas that are really, really, really tall are finite. This area turned out to be, of course, uh, 2. And so I'm guessing that this area would be 2 as well. So we would have a total of 4 in this entire area. This integral becomes equal to 4. See why they pay me? Easy does it. That's why, um, you know what's helping me is I got the right mood. Because I'm going to be solving these all day long. I'm going to be. Uh-huh. On the next level. I'm going to be chilling with that bass trap. I'm going to be chilling with that bass trap.